Tonight's special guest is a filmmaker like no other. He started making experimental films with his friends in his parents' bedroom at the age of 17. And by the time he was 22, he was an award-winning auteur, celebrated around the world as the savior of counterculture cinema. Screaming fans, reporters, and controversy follow him wherever he goes. One critic said of him recently, there but for the grace of God goes God. And last year, he was publicly labeled an unhinged madman by a studio executive. Either way, we can all agree the film world would be a much duller place without his uncompromising vision. Please give a warm welcome to the one, the only, Mr. Harry Bardo. <laughs> You must be well, um, used to welcomes like that. Sure, yeah. So, I want to start at the beginning. Mm. Going back to your first film, Number Nine Dream. Dreams are the royal road to the unconscious. There are no mistakes. The madman is a dreamer awake. We are never so defenseless against suffering as when we are in love. Loneliness and darkness have robbed me of my volleyballs. People are far more moral than they think, and far more immoral than they can imagine. There are no mystics. So we just saw a scene there from your first film, Number Nine Dream. Mm. And can I ask you, um, there was also a story that you, you hypnotized a lot of the cast to, to help with the performances. Is that true? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, different directors use different methods. Uh, I used hypnosis and, you know, it's very difficult sometimes to get actors. Actors can be... Ah, they can be very unruly. And you just have to treat them like pawns sometimes. I mean, they're just like little toy soldiers. So if you need to hypnotize them to get them to do what you want, then that's what you got to do. How would you describe yourself as a director? Are you hard to work with, do you think? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You'd have to ask the actors that. What do you think? I think you're demanding, yeah. but for the right reasons. That's right, yeah. <laughs> and why do you think this film was such a breakthrough? This one, I think, it, I think it tapped into the zeitgeist. You know, the population at large, it seems, you know, wanted in that moment to have this cathartic release of drama tinged with music and, and sprinkled with horror, undercut by romance that... You know, just it, it builds to a crescendo of violence and, uh, and Native American wind instruments. And I just happened to put all those elements together. Yeah, it's certainly unique. Mm. And um, why dreams? What, what do you find so fascinating about them as a, a theme for the film? dreams i mean I, it's something we all do we all have in common and uh, i think something that is so abstract we can just pull from it at any moment and do you get inspired for films from a lot of your dreams oh of course i do any in particular uh well i have uh 
I have this dream that I'm being chased by all my adoring fans, and uh, I think that's the reality. It, it does feel that way sometimes, and maybe this is a, a, a dream that reflected that reality because I'm, I'm running, I'm running as fast as I can, and I see all these, these fans chasing me. And at one point, uh, I stop, and uh, uh, because they've they've caught up to me, and they've they've started tearing at my clothes. And then I turn around, and they're not screaming anymore out of adulation. They're screaming out of horror because they've actually not only ripped off my clothing, but they've ripped off my skin. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a nightmare. Yeah. So they they then see my flesh, and um, and then I'm looking down and seeing my flesh, and I I feel raw, and that's that's why I love the color red so much. Okay. And, and that's why it's a predominant theme in my film. Sure. Is that a real worry for you, that your audience will one day turn on you? Well, yes, but I want them to turn on me. Why? Because eventually they'll turn back. Okay. Yeah. And what was the last dream you had? I just told what did you. you. Last night, what did you dream? I didn't sleep last night. Okay. What were you doing last night? Well, you were there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think everyone wants to hear about that. Why don't you tell everybody about the dream? <laughs> I have a different dream. Oh, what's your dream? I'm doing a chat show like this. That's your dream? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's exciting. Is that a dream or a nightmare? Um, depends, actually. Depends on the guests. Mm, fair. So, should we move on to your next film? It's your nightmare. Okay. <laughs> T13, take one. Hello? Hello? Ring the bell. Call for service. Excuse me, is there anybody here? I got my bags, I'm here, and there's no one around. Hello? Hello? Kind of weird. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. What's your character's name? My name is Cecily DeWitt. I've come to check in. How does that outfit feel? Here, I, I don't like it. I don't like it. Does it look good? Well, that's all we need. <laughs> quiet, please. Quiet, please. Here we go. to the first mark. Look stage right. Pick up the suitcase.
Take your jacket off. Walk to the second mark. Character's name? Aaron Landers. Tell me about that. What, what went wrong? That was your first coming from a background of experimental films, yeah. your first kind of studio commercial project. What went wrong? Why mm -hmm. was it shelved? I don't know. I mean, it, it was like doing a snuff film that was starring my nana. And so it was, it was a very awkward experience. And, you know, that's, it's a tale as old as time. It was, it was too many bare wires on set, you know, too much water, child actors who don't listen when you say not to touch the sparky things. And, you know, rinse and repeat, right, I suppose. Um, you know, I recall a similar thing happened to D.W. Griffiths. So what actually happened on set, there was a, an incident, or more than one. Well, the kids and the sparky things. And was the film shut down immediately? Um, no, you know, it's... Uh, Is it difficult to talk about now? Well, I think there's a lawsuit going on. Okay. Pending, so I don't know what you can how say. much I can share. You know? sure. But the difficult thing, it's, yeah, it's always difficult when you have children and electricity. Okay. Yeah. Health and safety issues. Oh, one could call it that. And is there any sort of feeling that the project was cursed from the beginning? I know some of the original cast disappeared and there were... There were problems getting it up yeah, and running. Well, it's a mov mo I mean, it was a movie that had uh, moments of, you know, greatness, but it was surrounded by swaths of sublimity.